Welcome to City Cinematheque, where the art and pleasure of the movies are the subject of serious discussion. I'm Jerry Carlson, and I teach film studies at the City College of the City University of New York. Today, it's our pleasure to present the 2005 Chinese production, Stolen Life, directed by Li Xiaohong. Li Xiaohong is thought to be the greatest of the female Chinese filmmakers, and this film is indeed told from a woman's point of view. Our protagonist is a young woman struggling with life in Beijing at the beginning of the 21st century. We'll be talking about that, its portrayal, and the career of this remarkable director after today's screening. Joining us will be Cineast Magazine editor Martha Nockobson, and we'll be talking about uh, much of this film. Now, enjoy an opportunity to immerse yourself in the experience of 21st century China in Stolen Life. Welcome back to City Cinematheque. I hope you've enjoyed this opportunity to see what I think is a moving film, and a film uh, very interesting in its uh, female perspective, made by a distinguished woman director, and clearly a story centered on women's experience in contemporary China and the not-so-distant past of China, including the Cultural Revolution. There's a lot to talk about in the next 30 minutes, and it's a pleasure to have with us here on City Cinema Tech, uh, Dr. Martha Nockinson. Uh, she is one of the editors of Cineast Magazine. Uh, she's taught at the Tisch School at NYU. She was the founder and creator of the Film Studies Program at Mercy College. I suspect a number of our viewers who uh, like watching David Lynch know her uh, through her groundbreaking scholarship on Lynch. Uh, that's not her only field of interest, with five books behind her. Uh, most recently, she's published uh, World on Film, which includes uh, two major sections on uh, Chinese uh, cinemas. And she's published on Chinese cinema before in her book on uh, uh, gangster movies, uh, comparison of, New of uh, America and Hong Kong. Welcome to City Cinema Tech, Martha. Hi, Jerry. It's nice to be here. Great. Let's, let's talk about Li Xiaohong, the director of this film. Okay. Now, insofar as there are household names of Chinese film directors, most prominently probably Chang Yimou, who everybody knows from his films and also the fact that he did the Olympic ceremonies, right. about as big an audience as you can, you can have, right. he's as close as you come to a household name. Right. And she, what, our filmmaker today is of the same generation, we'll talk about that, but she's not so well known. So fill us in a little bit, Li Xiaohong. Oh. Where does she fit? Who is she? Yeah, who right. is she? Who is Li Xiaohong? Good question, who is Li Xiaohong? She may be asking it herself <laughs> because she spans generations in an interesting way, and I am not aware of other Ch Chinese directors who do. Born in 1955, she is of the generation of, uh, I don't pronounce this as well as you do, Zhang Yimou and uh, Chen Kaije, uh, one born in 51, one born in 52, um, and uh, she should have been a part of their generation, um, having uh, broken, well, the silence on, Ch on Chinese tradition and history uh, after the terrible Red Guard period in China. Uh, she attended the Beijing Film Academy at about the same time that they did, but somehow she did not buy into what they were doing, but waited instead to do the kind of work that is now being done by the sixth generation filmmakers. Yeah, so st technically in terms of her graduation pattern, she would be fifth generation. She would be, okay. yes indeed. Uh, but in terms of the subject matter and, and the kind of treatment we have in this film, yes. which is of, of very much of, the vast majority of this film is about life in contemporary China exactly. fr from our female protagonist uh, uh, point, point of view. Right. Uh, she, I, I also know that she has uh, had a distinguished career doing big television dramas. Uh, she has also uh, produced a very fine film by another one of her uh, colleagues, uh, uh, The Springtime in a, in a, in a Small Town, uh, by Jen Zhuang Zhuang, who uh, people know from The Blue Kite uh, and Horse Thief. Which is very interesting because uh, almost the last movie that was made before uh, the communists, you know, 
cramped down on filmmaking was springtime in a, in a Chinese village or a small was, village, yeah, excuse me, spring, yeah. in 1948. So this is a remake of a classic and, and it has a more poignancy to it because uh, that was, I guess, what would be referred to as almost fourth generation, maybe, you know, just on the boundary. And she's now doing it again. And so it's, it's a very important thing she's doing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, in com I'm in complete agreement with you uh, uh, about that. Now, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, what distinguishes this film as this tradition of sixth generation realism. Yes. And, and, and what is that, from, from your point of view, what does that what does that mean that these that that she what does realism mean in this film? What what what, what sense is this a realism? Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. The Chinese communists who were in fact very interested in film and began the Beijing uh, Film Academy in 1956 insisted on realistic filmmaking. But what did they mean? They meant dogma. They meant that show the people the way it really is. Um, which means it fits in with what a Chinese dogma says. Okay, uh, when the fifth generation comes along, they can't, they can't be in your face about saying no, no, no. So they go to gorgeous oldie timey China, which is a great big move because, as we all know, the Red Guard um, punished very cruelly. Uh, and savagely anybody who referred to the old traditions. So they make a little headway. Oh, uh, gotcha. Not by going to a new kind of realism, but by bringing back the beauty of old Chinese culture, which was a very radical thing to do. Right. Okay. But the sixth generation doesn't want to do that anymore. What they want is to show realism piercing the dogma. So it's kind of socialist realism turned inside out? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that's, that's uh, 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 let me just do a little bit of a uh, riff on, on socialist, on socialist realism Please. because, uh, because it's one of these peculiar things with the spread of the communist world after the Bolshevik revo revolution that by, if you go back to the Soviet Union, socialist realism becomes official state policy Yes. Uh, for the arts in 1934, yes. and so then after World War II, with the spread of uh, Soviet-influenced communist states, the, right. the, the Eastern Europe, and then, and then China after 1949, the Soviets did their very best to export socialist realism, the official uh, dogma. Right. And certainly uh, the, the, the period of the uh, 50s leading up to the, the Cultural Revolution of the 60s is when the Chinese are embracing and making, you have to say, even more dogmatically totally. a, a, a totally. certain form of socialist realism, yes. which, as you've already suggested, in many ways messes with the concept of realism as we understand it, yes. um, because uh, because it is it is reality as always filtered through party doctrine and party concept of today and uh, and, and and tomorrow. Precisely, and there's always a happy ending mm -hmm. if you do the right thing as far as the dogma is concerned, and a tragic ending if you go against. Uh, right. uh, communist dogma, but not because you will be repressed, but because you're you're violating reality. Okay, so the sixth generation is not into hooray happy endings, right? Uh, and not into the tragedy of not being a good communist, right? Um, and um, that's where she comes right. in, right? Uh, in a, in a really interesting way. Right, absolutely, and, and let, let's just bring up one other um, uh, filmmaker, a, a filmmaker that you and I have an enormous admiration yes. for, for, and that is not part of the particular series I'm showing here. I hope to do something about his work in the future here right, on the show, right, right. but uh, Cha chung -ke, who is the filmmaker people may know better by his the names of his films yes. rather than by um, uh, his own name is maker of of, of platform, the world, unknown pleasures, still life, um, 24, 24 city. Mm. Uh, and he's uh, someone who is illustrates just as this film does, yes. uh, this, this notion that, well, what, 
what's really happening right now? Do, do we have, as I think this film does from, a, from the point of view of our um, young female protagonist, what are the contradictions of today itself uh, gotcha. with, with a candid appraisal of what the influence of the past and the immediate past is over, over, over this? Um, so that uh, he, in, uh, he in the world will take something like an amusement park in Beijing Wonderful movie. A absolutely, and we highly recommend it to everybody in the we world. Do, we do, we do. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like an amusement park that duplicates the uh, simulacrum of the world, and yet everybody who runs it is an immigrant who's come to seek their fortune. Um, and, and so we get to know the conditions that make the illusion of modernity um, possible. Right. And, and that's echoed in this film with something like uh, this uh, uh, visually, this contrast between the, the mall where she's working as the clerk uh, and that, and then this underground labyrinth where she and the boyfriend are, um, are, 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 are living. That's right. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you make of our protagonist? I mean, why do you think, why do you think this, uh, she is an important protagonist for our director, and I think for us, because we come to, you know. Um, I'm going to call her Yanni. That sounds how, would, sound, how would you say it? Uh, uh, Chris, I'm you know no authority on this. Uh, Yanni? I okay, mean, so, okay, so we have Yanni, and we have her as the protagonist in a movie called Stolen Life. So what are we talking about? How has life been stolen? Yeah. Whose life has been stolen? And it turns out everybody's life has been stolen. I think it's a very wise comment. Go on. You know, she's at the center of it. She's the one we care about. We watch her um, making all kinds of wonderful, wonderfully articulated decisions. And why is this interesting? Why is it important? Uh, because of the position of girl children in China, traditionally, and even under communism. Um, and we have here a story about a girl child. There's a point where her mother said, I wanted to abort you. This will, I mean, this will have resonance all over right. the right. Chinese public because we know how many Chinese girl babies are disappeared one way or another. Right. Um, okay, but this baby, uh, this baby came came into life. Okay, but something happened to destroy her relationship with her mother, to destroy her relationship with her family, and to destroy her relationship with herself. And she is unable afterward to build a relationship with a man, with a career, and with a baby. Okay, her life has been stolen. But so has the life of her mother. Yeah, that's a very interesting. Let, let's let's go into that because okay. I think that's uh, it, it's telegraphed. Yes. Um, in the film, in a way that anyone in a Chinese audience knows exactly. There's no ambiguity about it. No. But 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 for us in the West, it, it's something we may need a little bit of explanation. So so, what's the story on her mother? Well, you're right. As soon as the Chinese audience hears it, they know just what's going on. We may not even hear it yeah. unless we have had a strong education in Chinese culture. She, uh, the girl is pregnant. She, uh, the mother finally comes to see her, and she tells her the story uh, that the girl really doesn't know, right. um, and we don't know, um, that she was an intellectual who was sent to the country. Like all intellectuals, I had, which actually she doesn't say was sent, I had to go to the country. Right, right. Very, very... Uh, misty and shadowy, um, and she gets involved with a peasant mm -hmm. man, um, and she has this baby, and she cannot be, she cannot come back to Beijing. She had originally, okay, what is that story about? Well, it's the story of what happened during the horrible repression of the Red Guard between 66 and 76, where the intellect was mortified by sending intellectuals into the country to do menial work and uh, to, um, to live as peasants. Right. Um, so that all, all actual culture is, you know, sort of, they aren't allowed to have any kind of contact right. with it. Okay, well, we know what this has to mean for um, 
the development of art and music and politics, et cetera, but what does it mean for the family? Oh, very a key question. See? Uh, and what it means for the family here is this enormous disruption. Um, this girl, Yanni, when she finally sees her father, she looks with him, at him with contempt because he is a peasant. Everything they did um, worked, you know, against um, improving life in China. So now the girl is separated from her father. She says, my mother, you know, oh, she, she speaks so badly and she smells funny yeah. and she's greasy. Absolutely. I mean, this is horrible. Yeah. Um, and the girl has, hasn't got the, the contact with her mother that she needs to have. The mother's life was stolen. The life of the family is stolen. And what's so interesting about the way Li Xiaohang has um, has handled it is she also very gently, and yet maybe in China they would get it quickly, uh, tells us, well, the tradition that came before that wasn't so great either. Look at the grandmother. Ah, uh, that's a, uh, I think you've, you've hit on a key point because this is, um, you know, a, a film in, in which uh, each generation there's a flaw in this relationship of the mother daughter. Uh, yes. r relationship that that is ultimately traceable back to patriarchal uh, patterns. Well, this is like patriarchy, like we don't know. I, I, okay. Yeah, I mean, I really have to say that I know that you know under other circumstances I'd be talking about patriarchy in our culture, mm -hmm. in Western culture, but the Red Guard was something else. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. something I hope that none of us ever has to know Absolutely, anything uh, yeah. about. Um, but. She's also doing something that I consider to be extremely interesting, uh, considering that by the time she made this film, as we know, capitalism is alive and well um, and booming in China. You bet. And yet, she also takes a swipe at that. Look at Mu Yu. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he is a parody of a, of a capitalist. I, I, think that, I think that is as precise a description of Muyu as could be offered, and I, I think it's a very interesting thing that you that we have two, as it were, confession scenes. Yes. Um, uh, the mother talking about her past yes. and the key events that that pr that that exiled her to the countryside, yes. kept her kept her there, and stole her life. And then we have uh, you know he comes home drunk, etc. Yes. She confronts him with the evidence. And then all of a sudden he goes from drunk into the arrogant man who shows her, no, I've been controlling all of this. And uh, he confronts in, in this manner that you suggest so well with that, with that brief phrase that he's the, he's the person running the show according to the new principles of this, uh, of this, of well this society. Said. Well the wealth. Said. That I can become, this is the place where I can become who I want to become if I'm smart enough to manipulate people and to make and to and, and to make money and to the degree to which the society he says and you thought you were somebody special yes. because you were you, you were going to be at the university mm -hmm. but look who outsmarted you and look who now outsmarted you in terms of seducing you outsmarted you in terms of your legal status because you there's no charge that you can bring against me and who's yeah. holding the money and who's holding the money and yet there's a second layer. That's gorgeous, Jerry. There's a second layer under it. His life was stolen, too. Uh oh. He's an orphan. Absolutely correct. We have no idea, and I, I love that we have no idea. Yeah, yeah. How did this happen? But so many things did happen in the period right. in which, it, was he another victim of the Red Guard somehow? Mm -hmm. Did they kill his parents because Perhaps, of something? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, did they rusticate them? And you know, is this what happened? And this other wonderful thing: he grew up with people who grew vegetables in the con in the country. That's all we know. I mean, right. she said, "Oh, you told me, well, you know, that that yeah, your parents yeah. were." He says, "Well, I did, but they weren't my real parents." But here we have. I mean, because she's braiding everything so beautifully together. Um, People who grew vegetables in the country were, according to the Red Guard, the most important, best kind of people right. that possibly could be. He grew up with them, and how good was that? 
look how he turned out. So obviously she's, um, I, this I think is what's very beautiful about this film because um, it's a real advance. It's not the opposite of a fourth generation film. It's, you know, where you would then say, uh, okay, tradition is wonderful and, you know, sort of communism is terrible and you know, I'm negating everything that you wanted to right. be positive. What she's saying is life's a whole lot more complicated than that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and I think you bring up this very interesting thread of the fact that we, uh, we, we see people in their uh, daily life here in this, in, 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 in this film. And, you know, this, this highly mobile and HD camera, because it's an HD That's right. movie, it's, a di it's an example of digital, digital cinema, you know, gets into the corners of this, of this basement apartments and all of those, all of those things. Yet, no matter how uh, intimate we get, with, the, with 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 these with these daily things, and I like the phrase you use, braided together. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the there's a backstory to all of this. These yeah. things that look so normal and modern and urban, we we get to find out how the people arrive there, and um, that the that that one of the uh, cornerstones of of all Chinese ideology, which is whether it be communist, or not, which is the which is the Chinese family, yes. is, a, is a centerpiece right. of this, is not merely under threat, but we're seeing the degree to which it's effectively been destroyed yes. as a social unit yes. by the different uh, forces of politics uh, and, and history. And, and, and who did the stealing? You can sort of say history did the stealing because there's a, there's a way in which everybody has been intersected in one generation or another with these, uh, with these forces. Well, that's true. I don't like to say history did the stealing because that's too impersonal. I mean, there are people who need to account well, for this. No, that, that's a, um, uh, there were people who helped who history things. along uh, you, you, in, in absolutely that respect. The absolutely the case. But you're absolutely right. There's a one-two knockout punch on this family. It begins with the Red Guard, and then there's the second punch from capitalism, where and, and both of them involve the destruction of the mother-child relationship, yeah. particularly in this case, a yeah, mother, mother daughter, though hers is a son. So then it goes on to the mother's son. So I suppose maybe if you wanted to be a little bit cynical, you could say that in this movie, if you know she's saying, okay, maybe you don't care about mothers and daughters, but look, it's going to impact boys too. Right. And you're gonna have a mother-son problem. Um, um, well, yeah. <laughs> well, well, one of the things I'm, uh, we, we haven't touched on, and I, I'd like to touch on uh, now just for a bit, is the, I'm going to bring up another genre in addition to the, the, the realist principles, okay. sort of truth-telling about history, because, you know, in its own way, you can relate this film uh, to film, film noir. You Be think? Uh, well, I think you've got the voiceover narration, and then okay. you've got, uh, and then you've got the story which, which we eventually learn is, is a confessional story being told uh, at, at the end, which is about the seduction, betrayal, and legal sacking of someone's life with the, with, with the, the difference that, of course, this is a, um, its own coming of age story, that at the end, she has a lucidity yeah. about what has happened to her, yeah. and now she is re uh, is she is uh, re-engaging, but that kind of you know uh, again the plotting with these trap door structures of how <laughs> we're 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 you know we're trapped with her and uh, you know as uh, uh, how shall I put it as Barbara Stanwyck is to uh, um, um, uh, Fred Fred McMurray so Mumu is to Yanni. Uh, in that he, he, it's he, really he, interesting. He, he's a, he, no, he, but he's a serial seducer. Definitely. Uh, and and uh, uh, and there's a backstory there that's eventually so. You know, I, I I think on the one hand, you know, realism should be the thing that we're we're emphasizing wow. here unquestionably. But yeah, this is very interesting. However, yeah, I was thinking too about is this genre? You know, is oh, this genre? Yeah. You know, is there a genre here? Because well, I that's mean, that's a very good question. Um, 
Hong Kong uh, Chinese films yeah. are heavily into genre, uh, which they use with right. enormous imagination. You know, I mean, they take Hollywood genres and they explode them fabulously. So you have to think about genre in terms of right. Chinese movies, even if you're thinking about what, you know, sort of the government idea about realism is. I'm thinking melodrama. Well, I think th I, I think these it, it's this is the kind of very rich again. I'm going to use your word braided film in which there's this you know not only the braiding of of character character qualities or, or or of plot, but there's a way in which you know this is a a film that she wants to have compelling and accessible, and one of the ways of doing that is by accessing the traditions of genre yes. uh, that people are and and. A crime film and melodrama, uh, though they have a, 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 a bit of a different shape in Chinese uh, film sure. history, of course, yeah, but sure. nonetheless have a shape, you know, there. And I think she she uh, you know references them as 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 uh, as a I way think. of bringing us into this uh, really very compelling story world of the of the film. I think that's really very interesting, and I guess you could play around with the uh, with the idea that instead of the femme fatale, you have the homme fatale. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know that that is that is a, a a great thing, and I tell you what, I'm going to leave this as something that our spectators should think about uh, about the om fatal <laughs> on, the, on this, because we've reached uh, the the end uh, of, of of our talk. Okay. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed what we were doing here today uh, on City Cinema Tech, uh, please visit our website at www.cuny. Dot TV. There you're going to find out information about this film series and about our coming film series. You'll also find information and click-ons about all the other programming at CUNY TV. And, not exactly a surprise, you'll also find ways to communicate with us by email. The world is websites and emails. We know, we know that. So please, uh, we look forward uh, to your comments uh, and also to joining our e-list. So visit www.cuny.tv. Uh, Martha, thanks for joining us here today, uh, for bringing uh, your interpretive powers, your ideas. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope um, uh, people will uh, still keep thinking about what we've been talking about, because this is a very rich film. I think we've unlocked a little bit of it, and I want to thank you for helping me do so. I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much, Jerry. Great. Look forward to seeing you here again. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I hope you'll, you'll tune in again here on City Cinematheque as we stroll through the archives of world film history. In any case, I want to thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>